The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. I'm sure you're aware of the philosophical question, if a tree falls in a deserted forest where no one can hear the sound, did it make a noise? Carry the principle one step forward. If no one saw it fall, did it ever fall in the first place? Now, don't answer these questions too quickly. No one has ever been able to resolve them to everybody's satisfaction. And what does the Sahib require of me? Christus, I am cursed with the habit of gambling. The curse can be lifted. No, Priestess. It has been predicted I can stop only when the sun shines at midnight, when snow falls in the jungle, and when the deer turns upon and slays the pursuing tiger. Is that all? Is that all? This matter can be arranged. Our mystery drama, The Eye of the Idol, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Tony Roberts. I'll be back shortly with Act One. A message from CBS Television. We're now sending all kinds of signals into space. What are the odds that someday someone or something will answer? What if our oceans continue to rise? And what happens when human engineers begin to engineer humans? This is Walter Cronkite. In the next few weeks, I'll look at these stories and more as I continue my new assignment, The Universe. Walter Cronkite's Universe, Tuesday at 8, 7 Central and Mountain on CBS Television. What do doctors recommend to avoid constipation? These days, doctors stress the importance of fiber in the diet. Food fiber that helps the system regulate itself naturally. Metamucil is the laxative made from natural fiber. No chemical stimulants. So for occasional constipation, doctors recommend Metamucil more often than any other laxative. Read label and follow directions. And now save up to a dollar when you buy Metamucil. Look for coupons in the July Reader's Digest. By Natural J's Ripple to Pets, Chicago's great tasting dip chips. You ain't heard nothing yet. The MGM Grand Hotel in Las Vegas presents Don Arden's Jubilee. The show of the decade. From start to finish, Jubilee is excitement and music. Come on, along. Rhythms of ragtime. Wonderful. To Gershwin. Marvelous. To Presley with an Elvis extravaganza. See the sinking of the Titanic. Music from World War I with the Red Baron dueling overhead. Yes, from the silent screen to today, it's all there in Jubilee with the glitter, glamour, and girls that you expect from MGM. Don't miss Jubilee. It's a grand experience. Opening July 30th at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. Ship me somewhere east of Suez, says Mr. Rudyard Kipling, where the best is like the worst, where there is no Ten Commandments. And a man can raise a thirst. Ah, yes. We shall never see those days again. And perhaps it's for the best. When a handful of British soldiers and civil servants rule the entire teeming subcontinent of India. India. That ancient and eternal land of mystery and romance. And this is a story that took place many years ago when India was called the British Raj. Danu! Danu! Where can a lazy scoundrel be hiding? Danu! Has the heaven-born called? Well, what have I been standing here doing? Well, snap to, look sharp, step lively. 
I dine tonight with the parents of the Saiba Penelope, understand? Each word from the presence fills this ignorant person with magnificent enlightenment. Yes, lay out my best shirt and uh, place thou therein the silver studs. Ah, uh, sooner than say this, thy servant would rather eat dirt. But I must disobey the heaven-born's command. All right, now look here, Danu. The silver studs cannot be placed in the shirt. Because they are still in the clutches of Mustafa Ali, the money lender. Oh, Lord. All right, all right. We'll improvise. Hast thou drawn my bath? If it pleases the presence, I have not. Well, how can it please me, thou benighted fool? I've had a hard day at the office. I want my bath. With your honor's permission, it is not possible at this time. The well must be repaired. Before the water may flow. Then I remember I told you to have it fixed. I have done even what the favored one has commanded. I went to the office where these things may be arranged. The babu of the accounts would not consent. Why, that arrogant little clerk. What did he say? He said, and I repeat, say unto Farnsworth Sahib that we will see first the color of his money. All right, all right. We'll sort this out later. And meanwhile, place thou the dress suit, the shirt, and the razor in a bag. I will bathe and shave at the club. Ah, the club. This letter came for you. From whom? It is even from the self-same club that the Blessed One has just now mentioned. Well, give it to me. Why didst thou not leave it on the table where I could see it? If the Glorious One will permit... Had I left it on the table, the bad news it contains would have spread through the entire house. Why dost thou say it's bad news? One can feel the evil spirit churning about within. Mm. Uh, Mr. John K. Farnsworth, Bubbling Well Road. Dear Jack, I'm sorry I must notify... What's this? No regulations. All members in arrears barred from club privileges until back dues are... Respectfully, Percy Smollett. Oh, they can't do this to me. I'm a charter member. It is a year since the Magnificent One has paid a single rupee. Oh, shut up. I have to have a bath. Take thou the bucket. Go to the well in the village. Well, why dost thou stand there, Danu? Be off. Fill the tub. Uh, <laughs> Before this reputationless clod enters the bathroom... I suggest the invincible one go in there first. Well, why would I want to go into the bathroom before thou bringest the water? And hold at the ready the double-barreled rifle. Fool! Why would I bring a rifle into the bathroom? Because there is, lying in the tub, a cobra. A cobra? How did a cobra get into my bathtub? It must have slithered up through the sluice. Oh, this is absolutely all I need. Hey, they enjoy the warmth of the pipes. Yes, I'll give him something to enjoy. Uh, put the gun together for me. It is even now assembled and loaded and waiting by the door. Between the sharks at the club and the snakes in my house. Oh, look at him lying there. As if he owned the place. You think the beggar was paying rent and taxes? Well, how do you like this? Ah, that did him. <laughs> Ugly brute. Fifteen feet, if he's an inch. <laughs> do you know? Yes. Come here and get rid of him. Uh, uh, with your honor's permission, soon. No, no, not soon. Now. No, but we must wait. For what? The meat. Even now, it is probably crawling through the pipe on the trail of its beloved. May I remind the unconquerable one to hold the other barrel ready. Some mornings, it doesn't pay to get up. But on a day like this, it doesn't even pay to be alive. <laughs> And thus, you have met my master, Farnsworth Sahib. He makes much noise and many threats because he is afraid people will discover that he has a kind heart. But, more important, many people have already discovered that he has a foolish head. 
especially where games of cards are concerned. Although he sees himself victorious like a lion, at the end of the evening, he is always shorn like a lamb. Got the other one, Danu. Come, get rid of these ugly things. You don't have to be afraid. They're dead. Ah, now, one may truly marvel at and uh, safely touch their awesome beauty. Just get the filthy things out of here. See, see, this is the female. She died for him. She heard the shot. Still, she came, preferring the companionship of death to the loneliness of life. Wilt thou take those disgusting things out of here and toss them on the trash heap? It shall be even as your honor commands. I knocked on the door, but no one answered, so I came... Oh, what's that? Oh, no. Oh. Please, please, Penelope, my darling, don't, don't faint. Oh. Don't faint. Oh, no. oh, no. Keep them away from me. Keep, keep them away. It's all right, my dearest. They're dead. Well, where did they come from? Well, they, they were in the bathtub. The bathtub? Well, you know how cobras are. They like warm places. The bathtub? And you expect me to live in this house after we're married? Oh, darling, we'll fix it up prettily. I'm very glad our engagement is broken. We'll put up curtains and all the other foolish little things so dear to our woman's heart. Did you hear what I said? The engagement is broken. Dearest, I always hear what you say. You said the engagement. What do you mean, it's broken? Who? Who broke our engagement? Three people made that decision. Three? First, Daddy. He was at the club. There it was, on the bulletin board for all the world to see. Suspended for non-payment of dues. Uh Uh-oh. I came by to warn you. Don't come to dinner tonight. Daddy's lying in wait. But I can explain. Second, there's Mother, who never approved of you, to begin with who felt she was throwing away her daughter on some second-rate assistant district superintendent of the railway and telegraph department. I am not a second-rate assistant district superintendent. I am a second deputy assistant. And third, John Kenneth Farnsworth. Why do you call me John Kenneth Farnsworth? Because this is a formal occasion. I am serving notice that I intend to break our engagement. You can't do that. I have just done it. Penelope. You lied to me. My darling, I never meant... You never meant to keep your word. I tried. You didn't try hard enough. If there's a losing horse anywhere at any racetrack in India, you'll bet on him. In in the interests of accuracy, my darling, I have been losing mostly on mares and maiden fillies. You promised me you would stop all gambling. I meant to. I release you from your vow. I free you from your obligation. We are no longer engaged. I thought you loved me. I do love you. But I'll get over it. I'll meet someone else. Someone who prefers me to a night of cards and a day at the races. Please, darling, listen. Someone who shall not sentence me to a life of poverty. Someone who will not gamble away the roof over my head and the bread from the mouths of my children. I've changed. You speak in echoes, John Kenneth Farnsworth. I would return your ring. Except you had already pledged it to Mustafa Ali, the money lender. Penelope! Penelope, come back! She's gone. Danu, she's gone. Yes. What am I going to do? Find another. Who could replace my Penelope? Uh, There is the daughter of the colonel of the cavalry regiment. The tall, fair-skinned blood. Oh, you mean the gawky albino? Uh, uh, there is Miss Leslie. She squints. True, true. But she has an income of 2,000 rupees per month. Well, let us stop this melancholy recital of the seedy charms of mediocre women. I have lost the sun. Am I to have my way lightened by flickering candles? Get me a rope. A rope? What does the presence propose to do with the a rope? Hang myself. Is there another use for a rope? Quickly. For the sake of the Sahiba Penelope. The rope, quickly. I cannot live without her. But it is not necessary for the presence to live without the Sahib. Thou hast heard. She has broken our engagement. If the protector of the poor will but listen. The Sahiba is angry because of the gambling. Mm. 
if she can be shown that the heaven-born renounces this sin, the Sahiba will relent, and there shall be connubial bliss. Dost thou not realize that the gambling is with me like a fever in the blood? I will stop gambling when the sun shines at midnight, when snow falls in the jungle, when the deer turns upon and slays the pursuing tiger. But she does not love thee. Is the sahiba like the she-cobra that welcomed death to be with her mate? <sighs> if the center of the universe will only deign to listen, this most unworthy one has an idea. An idea? What sort of idea? Why does the sahiba object to gambling? Why? Hmm? Because it's immoral, I suppose. No. Because your honor always loses. But reflect. If I could show your honor a way to gamble and never lose. What do you mean? Never lose. Always win. Always win? Every time. How is such a thing possible? How? Very well, how? A way to play and always win. Why, that's like having a license to print money, isn't it? Even better, it's like having the Philosopher's Stone. Well, this sounds like something worth waiting to hear. And we shall hear all about it in Act Two. Someone. Reach out and touch someone close who's far away. And Daddy, I start next month. They gave me my own office on the 25th floor oh, with my great. own name on it. Well, that's super, Andy. I bet you got a great view. Well, not really. The new members of the firm don't get offices with windows. My daughter, the lawyer, doesn't get to look out the window? Not for a while, Daddy. For now, I have to look out the wall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish you could jump on a plane and come and celebrate with me. Me too, honey. We're so proud of you. We know what it took to get through law school. Oh, so do I, Daddy. And I know I couldn't have done it without you and Mama. Your encouragement, your understanding. And we all know tuition doesn't grow on trees when you're not made of money. Daddy, thank you. I love you. Andy, right now, the richest man in the world. Now, let me put your mother on. She'd never forgive me if I didn't let you talk to her. Reach out, reach out and touch someone. The bell system. Reach out, reach out and touch someone. Lauren Green speaks to you for Medic Alert. An accident or sudden illness might seriously affect your ability to speak or communicate. That's why wearing a medic alert emblem is especially important if you have a hidden medical condition such as an allergy to penicillin or diabetes, hypertension, or a heart problem, for example. The emblem contains a special ID number, a 24-hour phone number, and your medical condition engraved on the reverse side. In an emergency, Medic Alert provides identification and vital information within seconds. A wallet card is sent to you each year to provide current medical information. Wearing a Medic Alert emblem can help ensure you swift and accurate treatment in a medical emergency. Remember, Medic Alert speaks for you when you can't. Take good care of yourself. For information, write Medic Alert, Turlock, California, 95381. This message was brought to you as a public service by this station. According to Mr. Grantland Rice, when the one great scorer comes to write against your name, he marks not that you won or lost, but how you played the game. That refers, of course, to the game of life. The game of cards, however, is completely different, especially when money changes hands. What sayest thou, Danu? There is a way to gamble and never lose. It is even so. I don't believe it. And yet, if your honor will permit me, it shall be revealed. Uh, when? At the proper time. Danu... Dost thou say this to divert me from my purpose, which is to hang myself? Well, of course. That did happen to be why I said such a thing. 
Would I let Farnsworth Sahib throw away his life because of the whim of some cheat of a girl? Huh. How foolish are the English. How eager to die for love. Ah, and yet, how was I to keep my promise? Was there a way to gamble and never lose? And if so, how could I find it? I decided to seek out Laila, the witch. Who knows? Perhaps she might have heard something in the winds that blow between the garden of Genaden and the gates of Gehenna. Why dost thou seek Laila? What is thy desire? To find a way to gamble and never lose. This thing cannot be. Life itself is a gamble. And in the end, all must lose. Ah, yes, I know. Then why ask? It is for my master, Farnsworth Sahib. An Englishman? Eh, he has a good heart. Why does he gamble? It is sickness. Yes, it kills more foreigners than the fever. Is it possible to help him? Leave me to think upon it. Dino, come here at once. Now, you said you knew of a way that I could gamble and never lose. Now, what is it? If the favored one will reflect, his servant said he would find a way. Uh -huh. Just how long is this supposed to take? Ah, oh, someone stands without. Open the door. Hmm. Oh, and who is this? Protector of the poor. I am a holy woman. I sell charms and potions and spells. No, there is no need of thy wares in this house of sorrow. House of sorrow? Has one died here? One is about to die. And what is the illness? Love. Yes. Love comes and goes and kills many. And yet her hand may be stayed. By this charm I can give thee. Oh, holy mother, I prepare myself to meet my maker. I cannot fill my mind with heathen tricks. But here, here, take this. My last rupee. And give me thy blessing. I travel soon to a far country from which none may return. Ah, thy last rupee. There is a kind heart. I give my blessing. And now, I shall leave. Ah, what were you we discussing to know? Uh, oh, yes, this gambling system of the vine. Well, what is it? By uh, your honor's favor. It shall only take a little while longer. For what purpose had Lila come to the house? Had she cast a spell on him? How would she be able to help? Had I been mistaken? Or when she left, had she given me a certain look as if to say, come to me soon? I know now why the master gambles. Truly? He gambles heavily for two reasons. First, to wager huge sums to risk one's substance gives a man a devil may care reputation as an adventurer. Can this be true? Second, he believes that losing money to people is a way to buy their affection and goodwill. <laughs> What wisdom! Oh, holy one, why dost thou not speak these words of enlightenment to Farnsworth Sahib himself? Would he listen to an old heathen sorcerer? But if someone, someone could tell him. Oh, Layla, what is to be done? We must cure thy master of the gambling. Yes, but how? Thou didst promise. Thou wouldst show him a way to gamble and always win? Yes, but even if I could find it, how would winning cure him? He has tried losing, has he not? That has not opened his eyes. Very well. Let us see what winning may reveal to him. Well, how, how is this to be arranged? Listen... 
thou and closely. Why? Why have we come here? Patience, Your Honor. Just a little bit longer. I'm a complete fool. I let you drag me out to the jungle in the middle of the night. We are protected by the emanations from the shrine. Shrine? What shrine? The shrine of Azari. Uh, the shrine of Azari. Uh, uh-huh. And uh, what does one do there? One finds the magic. What kind of magic? Whatever magic one is seeking. In the case of the anointed one, the magic that makes him a constant winner. Mm, now this I have to see. Where is it? It is not much further. Ah, see, just ahead, a clearing. And uh, the ancient statue. Yes, the statue of Azari. <laughs> That? <laughs> that shapeless piece of clay? That's Azari? <laughs> what is that shining thing uh, near the top of it? Tis the eye of fortune. The eye of Azari. It sees all things. Oh, great goddess Azari. Thy servant seeks thy favor. Who's that? Tis Layla. The high priestess of the goddess Hazari. She looks familiar. Wait. I know her. She's that beggar lady who came to the door the other day. Ah, yes. She will sometimes wear that guise. She had come to test your honor. To test me? Why? To see if your honor is worthy. Worthy? Worthy of what? Worthy to receive help. From the goddess Hazari. Oh, is that a fact, huh? Well, how does she know I'd be here? I mean, how do I know this isn't a trick thou hast arranged with her? I would put nothing past thee to know. Approach the shrine. Approach. Do even as she says, Sahib. Well, this is humbug. I'm going home. Approach. Here. It is the goddess that speaks through her mouth. The goddess Hazari herself. Thy name is Fansworth Saib. The high priestess Lila says thou art good of heart, but thy heart is troubled. Speak. Well, that's true, I suppose. And what is the source of thy sorrow, Saib? I, I, I like to gamble. I, well, no, I just don't like it. I... Yes? I have to. I mean, that's all there is to it. I simply have to. And what wouldst thou have from the goddess Azari? Well, assuming that we're dealing here with a legitimate proposition, as as long as I have to gamble, I would... I would like to be able to win. Could the goddess arrange it so that I could become one of those who... Walks off with the money? The goddess Azari speaks through me. The answer is yes. Yes. Master, thou art saved. I can play cards now and win. Constantly. Oh, and the horses, I bet. Uh, they'll come in first? All the time. Oh, wait a minute. The goddess says to me, her high priestess, do thou but lend the Sahib Farnsworth for however long a time he wants to keep it. The eye from my head. The eye? The eye. I take it from the head of the goddess and I give this precious jewel to thee. Jewel? Well, it's only a piece of glass. And a diamond is only a lump of coal. What am I supposed to do with it? Keep it on thy person. It will serve thee as the all-seeing eye when thou sittest down at the card table and when thou standest at the rail of the racetrack. Mm, the all-seeing eye. What am I going to see? The winners, the winning hand, the winning horse. Well, that's, 
That's simply impossible. True. It is impossible for those who have no faith. Oh, goddess Hazari, let me assure thee that my master Farnsworth Sahib has great faith. Faith fills his entire heart, soul, and body. Thy servant has spoken, Farnsworth Sahib. Dost thou agree with his words? Please, Farnsworth Sahib, please. Oh, well. Why not? I'll give it a try. I would, too. After all, what does he have to lose? And it doesn't matter where or when we find a gambler, does it? They seem to be a race apart, filled with their own symbols and superstitions. And besides, your true dyed-in-the-wool gambler will try anything once. And we shall try the third act shortly. Fitness that feels good by day needs firmness that feels good by night. That's why you'll love the Serta Perfect Sleeper. Luxurious top comfort plus deep inner support. You get both with every perfect sleeper. So remember, be a perfect sleeper. Buy a perfect sleeper, perfect sleeper. Buy up. It's a healthy investment in yourself. To keep your car running better, smoother, longer, turn it over to Goodyear for a 12-month engine tune-up. The Goodyear service store will tune your engine now, and if your engine needs adjustment or parts replaced that were part of the original tune-up, Goodyear will fix it free. A 12-month engine tune-up now for just $42 for four-cylinder cars with electronic ignition, six- and eight-cylinders higher, additional parts and services extra if needed, at $8 for standard ignition. Turn it over to Goodyear! This is WBBM Chicago, News Radio 78. Squad 12 is 10 4. We're responding. Accidents and other unexpected medical problems can happen any time of the day or night. That's why the emergency department of Bethesda Hospital never closes. We're open round the clock every day of the year. Qualified physicians and professional nurses are always on duty to provide immediate emergency treatment. And they're backed by all the specialized equipment and skills of Bethesda Hospital. A modern, fully accredited primary care hospital with diversified medical and surgical capabilities. You may never have a medical emergency, but it's a good idea to be prepared just in case. Keep the phone number of your personal physician handy. Keep our telephone number handy, too. 761-6000. 761-6000. Remember, on the north side of Chicago, we're near you when you need us. Bethesda Emergency Services, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, at Howard and Western in Chicago. said, true luck consists not in holding the best cards at the table, but in knowing just when to rise and go home. To which we might also add, and knowing when to stay in the pot, and when to fold, and when to bet, call, or raise. But if one could do all these things consistently, it would be more than luck. It would be because one possessed an all-seeing eye, which is what our story is all about. Danu! Danu! Does the heavenborn call his servant? Listen, was it a dream? A dream? Did I dream, Danu, that thou and I walked into the jungle and came upon a shrine to the goddess, uh, uh, what was the name of that goddess? Uh, I forget. Is that you? Yes, and she said to me that I could... Wait a minute. How dost thou know the name of the goddess? I was there with the heavenborn. one. Thou art there? With me? Then it was no dream. And this piece of glass... The eye of the goddess Hazari. It's supposed to show me the winning hand at cards, the winning horse at the track. It is even as the fortunate one says. I don't believe it. I can't believe it. Does the sublime one have the eye? Uh, The glass in my pocket. Then at the racetrack, even now... Are the horses striving with each other? Yes, well, what's the point of going to the racetrack? I don't have a single rupee to wager. True, true. But come, my lord. Who knows what visions await? See, 
See the horses stand in line? Yes, 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 I see, I see. Is there one that meets with my lord's favor? I have no money. If I did, I'd better than lose it. I was a fool to come here. No, Danu, I shall go home and put an end to my sorry self. But the eye, the eye of his eye, a piece of brightly colored glass. And it shows the heaven-born nothing? Nothing, Danu, nothing. My lord, on this paper is written many things, hmm. much information. Yes, I know that paper, Danu. How well I know that paper. It is called a tout sheet. And yet... It speaks much useful information. Mm. Well, I see the names of eight animals, and each is a stubborn brute that runs fast or slow according to some whim of its own mysterious, brutish nature. Yes, but still... And you... furthermore, Fatima. Fatima? Mm. Fatima. I see her break quickly at the start. She leads at the eighth, increases at the quarter... Fault is at the half. No, 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 my girl. Go, go. See that? She regains the stride. She enters the stretch. She's neck and neck. And now, now she forges ahead. She wins driving. Fatima. Fatima. You see, it is even here written on the paper. Fatima. I have seen Fatima win, but the race has not yet begun. Oh, it is the eye of Azari. What eye of Azari? That sees everything, even Fatima, at twenty to one. Fatima is twenty to one. It is written. Is it possible? Ah, there is the man with the book. Surely the presence will wish to wager, say, ten pounds on Fatima? Uh, Danu, don't rush me. Uh, Fatima, I saw her win. Stand, Danu. Let me write her name on this piece of paper. Fatima, ten pounds. Signed, Jack Farnsworth. All right, now then, Danu. Run thou to the book, Sahib, and place this in his hands. I did, even as I was told. And then, there was the gun. And the horses raced forward like tortured spirits rushing to escape from Gehenna. And the little mayor, Fatima, did lead them all. And no one else, it seemed, had seen fit to bet on her. So, as she raced about the track, there was a silence as the crowd's favorites lagged behind. And only the voice of my master could be heard in that vast throng. Oh, Fatima! You can do it, girl! I've seen you do it before! Come on, Fatima! Come on, girl! When the day was done, when we departed from the ring where the book sahib hold forth... Let me add this up. This is 200 for Fatima, 300 for Salia, 400 for Chalunda. It's not a bad day. What sayest thou to know? Yes, it is uh, the eye that has shown the invincible one how each race would end. Yes, yes, to know it is the eye. <laughs> for without it, I would never bet on such mangy pieces of horse flesh that have today won me this fortune. And where does your honor go now? Now, do you Now I go forth to the club. I go forth to Shear at a place where formerly I was shown. I shall recount all that occurred when I come home. It's Percy Smollett. Good evening, Percy. Well, Jack. Oh, I see the club is having a dance. Uh, well, Jack, I, I, I would like to avoid any unpleasant... Of course, of course, we always have a dance on Saturday nights. Uh, uh, Jack, now, you're supposed to be barred from the premises until... Until I pay my dues. Yes, that's right. Uh, Jack, I don't make the rules. Of course not, Percy. Uh, where is my account? I wish to settle it. Now... Well, a thing that's worth doing is best done promptly. Well, it's, uh, it's a rather large sum. Well, I happen to have some cash in my pocket. Let me look. Oh, well, you think I have enough here? My God, Mr. What? Sir, Jack, what happened? Did some aunt of yours, some nice old lady, finally close her eyes? Well, let us say that some nice old lady finally opened mine. Should you give me a receipt, sir? Well, uh, yes. Why don't we step into my office? <laughs> now, let 
me sign this little receipt. And here you are. Hmm. I thank you, Passy. Yes, of course. Tell me, the usual bunch around this evening? Yes, why, of course. In the card room, naturally. I was headed that way myself. Hmm. You suppose I might sit in for a few hands? Oh. Why, Jack, uh, now that you're a member out in good standing once again, <laughs> so you're as welcome as the very air I would breathe. <laughs> My bet, I suppose. I say, a pound. Uh, Percy? Well, I say, uh, 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 let's make it a fiver. Jack? Jack, it's your bet. Uh, my bet? Hmm. Um, hmm. Uh, Jack? Tom, open for a pound. I, I say a fiver. Huh? What do you say? Mm. I say a tenner. Two jacks. Two ladies. Ah, well, now that's luck. Three kings. Three aces. Ah, and I'm thoroughly cleaned. I may as well fold. <laughs> Jack, you lucky devil. <laughs> And did you find a way to see through the backs of the cards? And so, my master became the richest man in the club. Everybody deferred to him and made much of him. But there was one who still shunned him. Penelope, Penelope, please wait, please. Oh. Yes. Penelope, you won't see me when I come calling... You won't talk to me at the club. You you cut me dead at Pilates and every other place. We run into each other. Can't you take the hint? Please, Penelope. It's a beautiful morning. You're spoiling my ride. But, darling, why won't you marry me now? Your parents no longer disapprove. Oh, no. They think you're quite a catch. Yes, you said you wouldn't marry me because you were afraid you would lose the roof over your head one day. Are you still afraid? Yes. But I'm rich, Penelope. I am easily the wealthiest man on the station. And every penny comes to you from gambling. And therefore, one day, every penny can leave you the same way it came. Oh, no, darling, never. You are having a streak of luck. It can turn. No, it isn't luck. It's you. Yes? I'll tell you this to prove I love you. Now, you mustn't think I'm mad, but I have the eye of the goddess. And with it... I can see all the winning cards, all the winning horses. Oh, my darling boy, you have gone mad. Penelope, listen. No, this proves once and for all you must rid yourself of this gambling sickness before it destroys you completely. Penelope, stay. I shall come back only when you have cast aside this accursed habit forever. <laughs> Yes, no. my original instinct was correct. I should hang myself. My lord has asked for a way to gamble and win. It has been found. Why this further talk? Penelope will have none of it. Dost thou understand? And without her, nothing is worthwhile in this life here below. Then give it up. The cards, the horses. Give it up, give it up. How can I give it up? My lord, perhaps this can be accomplished. How? Did not my lord once declare a set of conditions under which he would abandon the pursuit of the wagering forever? Ah, uh, I don't remember to know. But thy servant recalls. Come to the jungle, to the shrine of Azari, and to the high priestess. And what is this? The Sahib wishes to return the eye? It is no longer of use to me. Hold to the light, the all-seeing eye. Tell me what is revealed. Why, it's light. It's getting light. The sun... The sun is rising. How can the sun rise, Sahib? It is midnight. Look. Look, the sun. See how it lights up the jungle? Never has there been such a brilliant sunlight. Thunder? How is this possible? Look what falls from the sky. Snow. Snow. Snow in the jungle. Of course, it's snow. It's covering the trees. It's... it's I'm freezing. 
snow. Tiger? A tiger? I have no gun. I'm unarmed. Have no fear, Saeed. Thou shalt be protected. Protected? By what? By whom? That's a tiger. See, the tiger flees for its life. It is being pursued by a deer. A deer? See, the deer catches the tiger, falls upon it. A deer turns on a tiger? The sahib has seen it with his own eyes. Yes, yes, I have seen it. Thou art free now. For has not the sahib said, the gambling is a fever in the blood. I will stop when the sun shines at midnight, when the snow falls in the jungle, and when the deer slays the tiger. Remember? Yes. Yes, I remember. Thou hast seen these things? Yes. Where are they now? The sun at midnight, the snow in the jungle, the tiger slain by the deer. Well? The moon shines through the trees. There is not, never was, can never be any snow. And but fifty yards from here is a deer slain by a tiger, as is proper to the law of the jungle. But I saw the sun and then the snow and the conquering deer. Thou didst see what the gambler sees when the fever runs high in the blood. Visions, phantoms, illusions. And now the fever has burned itself out. Go. Clue! Clue, I just had the strangest dream. I, I can't, can't make heads or tails of the thing. It was, uh, it was, it was snowing, and, and, and deer were killing tiger, and that old beggar lady was... Oh, what's the difference? Does the heaven-born go to the club tonight? The club? Why would I want to go to the club? The protector of the poor goes there every night to play cards. Mm. Oh, well, I, I don't see the point of that anymore. I mean, why should I sit around in a sweaty room, drink too much whiskey, and throw cards at a surly group of nervous, bad-tempered people? Why, indeed. Especially when I can walk about in the fresh air, enjoy the beautiful moonlight with the lovely Penelope. Why, indeed. And so, Jack Farnsworth has made his choice. And you will agree with it or disagree with it, according to your own personal views on love, life, and gambling. And I shall have some personal views of my own for you shortly. Stay on the road with Quaker State. Running long and trouble-free. Quaker State's new Lifetime Engine Lubrication Protection Program guarantees in writing any new car engine using only Quaker State against oil-related failure as long as you own it. Quaker State, the quality motor oil refined from Pennsylvania grade crude oil. Coverage and limited warranty details at participating new car dealers. Proof of maintenance required. New car or old. You'll be Start out better. You seem to go much better when you start to play together. Maxwell House and you get back to the last stop With Maxwell House, only Maxwell House. A taste, a feeling like no other coffee. Always good to the last drop. your mornings with a double dose of laughter on CBS television, beginning with the Jeffersons. Me and her been through some hard times together, and ain't another woman in this world who will stick by me the way she has. You ain't laughing. The laughs continue with Alan. Yeah! He's the track, you right And then... Here's the first item up for bids, and the price is right. Join Bob Barker and... For an hour of excitement and fabulous prizes, it's the Jeffersons, Alice, and the Price is Right, weekdays on CBS television. Dr. Seuss for the library. 
First time I ever set foot inside a library. I was eight years old, and I got caught in a rainstorm. I ran into that library to save my shoes. What happened to me in that library was more valuable than any pair of shoes. That day, I found out where the great books were, and they showed me how to use them. And I hope that every kid who's listening in will get caught someday in a rainstorm in front of a library. A public service message of the American Library Association. people say of something or other that it's in the cards. Just precisely what does that mean? Is it possible that all the cards will always fall according to some prearranged pattern? Is it then also possible to predict that pattern by following laws of averages and probabilities? Was Jack Farnsworth's all-seeing eye merely a concentration on the past performances of horses? You can call it the eye of Azari, or you can call it applied psychology. Perhaps in the end, it's all one and the same thing. Our cast included Tony Roberts, Earl Hammond, and Roberta Maxwell. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall, inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams... too, with eight timely non-stops, including two from Close In Midway. You can also choose from three Delta non-stops to Houston, or from a dozen other departures. Delta has thrifty night coach and supreme super saver fares that'll save you money to all these places. See your travel agent or call Delta for details. And next trip to New Orleans, Houston, or St. Louis, call Delta. Ready? Go. Delta is ready when you are Delta. CBS News. The nationwide postal strike was scheduled to begin at this hour if there wasn't some progress in the talks. I'm Dave Dugan reporting on the CBS Radio Network. Rita Flynn reports from the negotiations in Washington. Talks between the Postal Service and the two largest unions resumed this evening, but thus far there's been no word about extending the strike deadline that passed at midnight Eastern Time. Earlier tonight, Vincent Zambrato, head of the National Association of Letter Carriers, again said today's talks have yielded no progress and members are reconciled to the prospect of a nationwide walkout. We don't do it with any fervor. We don't do it with any degree of happiness. In point of fact, we're rather sad about it. But certainly we're relaxed because we know we are right. The two biggest unions have flatly rejected a second wage package management said was a substantially different offer. But despite that rejection and at this late hour, the Postal Service still says it does not anticipate a strike. Rita Flynn, CBS News, Washington. There's no news on the baseball talks, and there won't be. Both sides have agreed to a news blackout. Federal mediators have said intensive news coverage has hindered progress. Those baseball talks continue Tuesday morning in Washington. CBS News will continue after this message. 
The Wall Street Journal, in a recent article, explained why investors should start figuring the proposed 1982 tax changes into their investment plans now. So have a pencil ready for an important offer from the Wall Street Journal that can help you get a head start every business day with up-to-the-minute business information that can affect your future and your company's future. Other stories in the journal revealed why the Reagan administration's efforts to cool inflation could result in high interest rates and a sluggish economy. Why delinquencies on home mortgage loans climbed to record levels in many areas. And how the drop in oil prices is helping companies and individuals all across the country. The Wall Street Journal. It's all the business news you need when you need it. Right now, you can get 26 weeks of the journal, one for every business day of the week, for less than $1.60 per week. That's just $41 for 26 weeks. So if you're serious about business, in the continental U.S., call toll-free 800-228-6600. That's 800-228-6600, except in Nebraska. You'll be billed later. The United States has indefinitely suspended all deliveries of F-16 fighter planes to Israel. A decision by President Reagan was announced Monday night in Ottawa by Secretary of State Haig. Secretary Haig says stopping the shipping of the fighter planes to Israel was done in the context of the overall violence in the Middle East. Secretary Haig rejected a suggestion that keeping the fighter planes from Israel was done to pressure the Israeli cabinet, which meets in a few hours to discuss a ceasefire. The leaders of the seven Western nations meeting in Ottawa have warned the Soviet Union against any military buildup. The Western nations also warned the Soviet-backed government of Afghanistan to stop giving aid to hijackers or face a cutoff of air service from the countries meeting in Ottawa. French President Mitterrand told President Reagan that high interest rates in the United States are causing unemployment in France, and those U.S. interest rates are going even higher. Most of them, with the exception of the prime, went up again Monday. In reaction, the stock market fell 18 points. That's the biggest drop on the Dow Jones average since President Reagan's inauguration day. The official death toll in the Kansas City Hotel tragedy has been reduced from 113 to 111. Police say there was an error in counting. There will be at least five investigations into what caused the collapse of the walkways at the Hyatt Hotel. The president of the company that designed the walkways, Jack Gillum, says it will be a while before anything is known. We will not release anything until after everyone has a consensus. It's one of those things that, uh, that, that you've got to have all of the facts and put them all together. And there, as far as we're concerned, we will not release any information until there's a definite conclusion on what caused it. And, of course, there will be different teams come up with different or possibly different viewpoints but because the different teams represent different concerns. It will all come out, but it will be a while. The first victims of the collapse of those walkways were buried Monday in Kansas City. Miss Venezuela, Irene Zayez Conde, is the new Miss Universe. Miss USA was selected in the semifinal round, but was not chosen as a finalist. Now this. If you love great music, great music of any kind, classical, jazz, country, you'll love this free offer from the Smithsonian Institution. The Smithsonian wants to help you explore fully the music you love. So it's offering, free for the asking, its catalog of the finest and most comprehensive recordings available nowhere else. In the catalog, you'll discover magnificent collections of opulent masterpieces by Bach and Handel. You'll also find some of the great performances of Louis Armstrong, Duke Ellington, and other jazz greats. There's a giant jamboree of country music and the joyous sounds of the American musical stage. And there's much more. If you're a collector, if you're looking for musical adventure, let the Smithsonian be your guide. For your free 24-page catalog with complete descriptions, simply write Smithsonian Recordings, Washington, D.C., 20560. That's Smithsonian Recordings, Washington, 20560. The Chrysler Corporation will report a profit for the second quarter of this year. That's the first time since the end of 1978 that Chrysler has not finished in the red. The announcement of Chrysler's turnaround was made by Auto Workers President Douglas Fraser, who serves on Chrysler's board of directors. Dave Dugan, CBS News.